now that we have a condition that tells us what in the real flow rho v at s and n is in terms of the displacement thickness um, and the edge properties, we can think about developing an improved EIF. So something that will do better than our simple EIF. And this is going to be a displacement body model. There's, al th there's also another model that works just as well, which is less physically intuitive, but it's numerically advantageous. And that's called the wall transpiration model. And that is actually the model that's used in XFOIL. But here we'll stick to the displacement body model because of its intuitive physical definition. Now the aim of the improved, uh, of any of these improved EIF models is to satisfy the normal mass flux requirement. So rho v of s and n should equal rho i v i of s and n. Now this again is going to improve the flow field predict prediction, especially if the boundary layers are thick. So the displacement body model uses the idea of a fictitious displacement body, which is offset from the real body by some distance delta n of s. And then the equivalent inviscid flow is tangent to the displacement body. So this means that we can put the vortex sheet on the displacement body instead of on the actual body walls. So let me draw a picture to illustrate exactly what this displacement body concept is. So if we start with our wall, and this is the S direction, and our displacement body will be something like this. And as I just said, this will actually have a vortex sheet on it. So that there's the gamma of S distribution on there. Locally, there'll be a normal direction to the displacement body, which is normal to it. Now, at some location here, This height will be delta n of s. And then I'll sketch out first what the real flow boundary layer profile might look like. And then draw in the new equivalent inviscid flow. So this now becomes ui of s and n. This dashed line, again, is the real velocity profile. And the red line is the displacement body. So 
And this, of course, is the wall. So this is an easy idea to understand. The effect of the reduced mass flux in the boundary layer creates a displacement body which pushes away the effective wall. And the equivalent in viscid flow is then tangent to that new effective wall. But what must be determined is what value of delta N of S will give the right vertical mass flux. Before we do that, let's note that rho i v i is not zero at the displacement body. Since the normal to so the displacement body is not the normal direction. Instead, it's tilted back by dds of delta n. So we assume that the model will give the, the right EIF so that UI I assume that UI equals UE. And this means that indeed we're going to get the right uh, equivalent in viscid flow. So then, rho i v i of s and n is rho e uh, u e times v d s of delta n, which is just the edge velocity tilted by the angle of the surface plus the integral from delta n to n of dn rho i v i dn. And again, using mass conservation, we can write this as rho e u e dds delta n minus delta n to n dds of rho i u i dn. This is using the same mass conservation relationship that we used earlier. And then since u i equals u e, we can write this as rho e u e d ds delta n minus n minus delta n. So what we're essentially saying is that rho i u i is not a function of n because it's just equal to rho e u e. And therefore, rho i v i of s and n can just be written as v e s rho e u e delta n minus n v d s rho e u e. Here, uh, the chain rule has been used because the derivative of this term is this term plus this term. So we require rho i v i to equal to rho v. And the real flow from before has rho v of s and n equal
dmvs minus n dvs rho e ue. So comparing terms, we see that these two terms are identical. And that means that dmds is equal to d ds of rho e u e delta n. Since earlier we had that m is rho e u e delta star, then we finally get the displacement body result that delta n of s must just be delta star of s, which is why delta star is called the displacement thickness. So the thickness of the displacement body is given by the displacement thickness at every point along the body surface. So this is a simple model for the effects of the boundary layer growth on the changes that, that will result in the inviscid potential flow outside the boundary layer. And this um, actually has several extremely uh, useful applications, which we'll look at next lecture.